This album to me is uh this is four for four for 30 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. This new Tyler album is four for four for 30 year olds. Yeah, man. this is <laughs> this that this that this is I know I know you know Uncle FD and shit niggas <laughs> like that. <laughs> You gotta get Uncle D, uh, Uncle FD name drop in the yeah, video. Of course, you know we have to. Uh, you, you know niggas like that, Joe Budden and shit like that. They've been they've been screaming how four for four was this pinnacle of rap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just turned twenty. I turned twenty seven the day before his album drop. I woke up early. I was like, I'm feeling mm. yeah, immediately. I'm feeling like <laughs> no real shit because there's a point in time where you are like even on the on the song where he's dissing Ian like he says stuff like I used to be young man and now I turn old like mm, like, mm, he, yeah, like he's yeah, like yeah. it's it, there's a point in time where you are transitioning from being the youth yeah. to being an adult mm -hmm. and it's a weird transition that's why I, I've talked about it on the podcast uh, for the last five years I'm like yo 20s 20s 20 20 blank numbers, a weird age. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. each year you get older, you get, get closer to not being the youth mm -hmm. and being this older, this older statesman that you never really asked to be, but it's kind of like you gotta be. It's inevitable. It's like it's inevitable. inevitable. You can't it's, escape it. Cause yeah. all of us think, all of us, you know, hip hop kids think we're gonna be hip hop kids forever. Yeah. Until you get a gray hair and you gotta dye your hair. <laughs> <laughs> until you, yeah, yeah. Until you get gray hair <laughs> and you gotta dye your hair. You see yeah, one gray yeah. hair, you like, well, time to dye that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that's kind of the theme of it. I saw you tweet you didn't yeah. get the theme. I want to talk about kind of the album itself now that we kind of like got that out the way. Like overall thoughts. Yeah. Um last when I listened to it, um I listened to it for I listened to it once, you listened to eight times, listen to it once. I I need to listen again. I got you it. You got immediately. it immediately. Got it immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it immediately. Cause I, I listened yeah. to it for the podcast. I'm gonna go back and listen to it again, obviously. Yeah. It's like regular life, but I don't listen to it. Because you these. like the album, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Um I didn't like it at first though. I, the oh, first four songs I didn't like it. Uh, Not the first four. It was like the I don't like when Tyler tried to do this rap thing. Oh, like what do you mean? Like stop trying to rap at me, nigga. It's like like stop trying to be this aggressive it. rapper, bro. Usually hey, he's he called himself out. By the way, there's a song where he's like, "Yo, T, why you rapping so tough?" Yeah, no, it doesn't really answer his own question. He but doesn't. It's just funny that he is self aware. He's like, I don't know, but like, why am I doing this? Somebody put uh, the what's the song where he doesn't eat on it? What's uh, it? thought I was dead. Thought I was somebody put that somebody put that verse over uh, Euphoria like yeah. one of the beats in Euphoria. I was yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. sounds way better. Mm. And it's like I know I love Tyler's well, production yeah. on certain stuff, uh, but that shit I'm just like that shit. Doo -doo. Bro, I don't like his aggressive raps over his production. Style. No, that shit sucks. It's is really doo-doo. It's doo-doo garbage. Shit from a butt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being honest. So bro. you didn't like Sticky? I'm assuming. No, I hate I. But I hate Gorilla. So as soon as I heard Glorilla Lewis, I went, yeah. Like, bro, I swear to God, I was yeah. like, and I, I, and I know y'all love Glorilla. I know y'all do. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't find her catchy. I don't find her cool. She ain't what street niggas listening to. <laughs> I'm doing yeah. a bit, but yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm not. Um, I don't. I don't like her. And then it was uh, Sexy, Sexy Red, Red, which I told you that like there was a possibility it was gonna make the album. It was gonna be yeah. I didn't like Sexy Red. I love Sexy Red. But she, to be fair, she got like four bars. Yeah. It was mad short. And then a Wayne verse. I don't need a Wayne verse in 2024 ever. Be honest. I'm ah, cool off all good. Wayne verses yeah, in 2024. And yeah. in, 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 in Gigantic 24, I don't need no Wayne nah, verses. Right? No way. You you say it's, it's over for, for Wayne? It, it's been over for Wayne for 15 years. Nah, <laughs> like, right. it's been over for Wayne. 15 years is a stretch. My fault. Yeah, a yeah. decade. A decade Damn, for sure since 2014. Yeah, okay. so you haven't like none of his new verses since 14. Not really. Like oh, Wayne wow. might surprise me every now and then, but I don't. I'm not. I don't need it. I don't need I it. Feel you. Okay, like I feel Wayne you. gave me the call to three. I don't need nothing yeah, else after yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah, I like yeah. like I, I I got I got all of the drought series. I, I don't I don't need any more Wayne. If I want Wayne, I'm gonna go listen to Wayne in his prime. Wayne today just sounds like. It sounds bad. The auto tune sounds weird. Like why why. Uh, he the only nigga all the tune his voice like that still. I, I know that's the Wayne sound, but it's like, whatever. I don't want to critique the Wayne sound too much. Yeah, yeah. I love Wayne. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first few records, I was like, no, nah, that shit sucks. And then he gets into like mm -hmm. really soft, like light, airy production. Like I'm walking on clouds. Yeah. 
And it sounds amazing. And yeah. then there's like, for me, this album is his most Pharrell sounding album of all time. Right. It, it, that includes even the harder sounding tracks. Yes. Like it's even all just the, like those drums, the fucking, the xylophone. All the that. Goddamn, like all he, that. He leans so deep into his I love Pharrell. Man. Which I thought it was interesting that as he's getting older, he's turning inwards. Yeah. Not only to himself, but his like discography. He's yeah. almost going backwards sonically a little bit. Too early. It was funny. Too All the, a lot of that hard stuff. I'm like, I feel like you made this song before. He did, but there's, there's, that's what I thought. It was so interesting that, like, and that's I think why a lot of younger listeners is probably like, "What the fuck is this?" Because yeah. it's like they're not used to like fucking like tamale. Yeah, you know, off a of walk. That's, like, that's exactly what it felt like to me. That's what I'm saying, like, wow, that's he, that, that's the greatest. Like experience. he's going fully inward tamale, into tamale, that tamale. like wolf. Damn near the tamale goblin. hit in 2014. I, I know. I feel you. And, and it, <laughs> And uh, humongous twenty four. Yeah, that I know. It's just like I don't know. I don't know if I need tamale again. I, I I agree, but I think that's what I find so interesting. He's like, as he's getting older, he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to like what I like. Like he's going inward. Like I said, instead of like going that. But the one thing that remains good sonically still is when he goes like softer. When he goes, what you were talking about, like, like, and he does like really like. Like beautiful sins, Ugh. beautiful like darling. I is probably gonna be the biggest song of that album. Darling, I, hey Jane, I killed you. It's crazy, and Judge Judy. Crazy that four, four song right. run. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Is the four song run of this album? I, I agree. I that's agree. when I was like, that's when I because the first day I was like, uh, and then I was like, nah, he got me. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. That's how I was like, thank God he got. He stopped doing. He stopped. He he stopped pretending to be Kendrick. Yo, nobody want to hear that shit, bro. Hey, I don't want to hey. hear you rap aggressively, bro. I, I feel you. And no disrespect. I love you, Tyler, but that shit, doo-doo garbage. Yeah, I, I didn't love it. And then he goes back into, like, Sticky, which is like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But then he, I like the way that he ends the album, by the way, because this is where he gets super introspective. Hold on, let's let's let, let's wait, because I I, okay. I, I I have good thoughts about that. Okay. Uh, But I want to just give my Hey Jane take real fast. Oh, yeah, yeah that's before probably, we, before that we was the to. moment where everybody was listening to it. I was like, wait. Talking about an abortion? What's going on? So, Hey Jane is two verses. Yeah. The first verse is what? I just, I remember why you brought the Hey Jane up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's two verses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. First verse, whatever. Yeah. We, I, I, I forgot it. It's, t- it's just him being like, oh, damn, girl, I didn't know you damn, was pregnant. Yeah, I know you was pregnant, bitch. Damn. Yeah, yeah I, I never, I'm not like this, yo. Typically, I don't let, you know what I'm saying? Yo, what's up? I'm, I'm not reckless. Than you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. let girls. Yo, I, only, I was just <laughs> rapping about condoms in my last album. Second verse is her being like, I'm pregnant and uh, we got to do something about this baby. Like, I don't know. And then I think she never gets an abortion. I think it's, she does. Yeah. yeah. That's where the song ends. Uh, my take about this, which I tweeted on Twitter, I'm going to send it to the podcast. Yeah. Because of a platform to say it. If Hey J was made in 2014, uh, the song would have been about Wolf Haley and one of his uh, uh, rape victims. <laughs> <laughs> the first verse would have been him yeah. rapping about raping her. The second verse would have been about the rape victim being pregnant now and sh- and her <laughs> living in like Oklahoma where like abortions is illegal. Yeah, yeah. The first verse would have been like pure rape apology. The second verse would have been like a cunning uh, social commentary on the state of uh, women's uh, women's uh, reproductive rights. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Literally. Yeah. That's what yeah. it would have been. It was just very fun. Yeah. But that goes to my point of like he like he's, he, he's leaning in. He and it's, it's things that he's always wanted to talk about maybe yeah. from those times. But he was like, now, nah, but I can't earnestly talk about. Yeah, like, I'm yeah, I can, I'm Tyler the Creator. I can't. Yeah, talk I got out. You know, what I'm saying I will fucking walk into paradox. I'm like, you know I eat roaches. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't actually talk about like my life and like how you know I might have got this girl pregnant. No, it was Wolf Haley that raped her. Uh, take your mask off. Uh, Cause I want to save the, the the one song, cause I got a I got a lot on this. I don't even know what the one song is. So take your mask off is the last record, I believe. No, it's a couple it, songs before. It's, yeah, it's, it's not it's the last. It's like four songs before. Take your mask off feels like an outro, by the way. That's, that's why I wrote it that does. down. It feels like an outro. It does. Yeah. Then it, there's like three outros on this album, by the way. There, yes, for sure. Uh, yes. Take your mask off. Uh, <laughs> that verse. There's a verse on there. Where he says, you got a wife and kids, but you fucking them boys. Yeah. And I'm like, he's definitely talking about some DL nigga he was fucking. 
Yeah, by the for way, sure. for sure. For and sure. The way the song was structured, like uh, from the times I listened to it, it was about, uh, it was a lot. It, I think it's about, it's four verses. Yeah. And I think it's breakdown. It's like the first one, it's probably the most cliche verse because he's mm-hmm. talking about like rappers that are act tough. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, you're not really that tough guy. And it's like, I right. will say before you keep going about this, because yeah. keep your thought, you can only make this song if you if you produce your own beats. True. Oh, this, yeah. this, this is a producer rapper song. Yeah. Because the way he leads into the mm-hmm. hook, you can only do it if you make your own beats. That's a, a fact. And that's yeah. the benefit of him making his own music and why like, he's able to create such good albums because mm-hmm. he can control every part of it. He, you know, it's, it's storytelling with it. But so that song is, is, is four verses. One is is uh, uh, like the, the cliche, yo, you rappers aren't really tough. You're an actor. Uh, then the next verse, I believe, is about the DL. It's like clearly based on the deal guy he's messing with, mm. but it's like it's this weird religious thing because then he says like, "Well, you're also religious, yeah." So like, what? Like you, you, but you go back to being religious when you come, yeah. Isn't that fucked up? So yeah. It's about like it's so specific. I, I think he, specific. he's so he's definitely talking about one guy. Yeah, who's like Christian? He's like, like, "Yo, you be fucking me in my butt." Yeah, and you got a wife and kids. What's going on? <laughs> Make your mind up. <laughs> yeah, and you're religious. Yo, God don't like that. Yo, God don't like that shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. Make your mind up, bro. You like, yeah. you want this bussy or not? Yeah. Then the third verse was about like postpartum. Uh, women with postpartum, mm-hmm. which is wild to me. It's like, oh, he's really <laughs> trying to cover all bases. Yeah, yeah. And then my favorite verse is the last one because he is talking about himself on yes. the, the last verse. He's basically just being like. Yo. Well, really actually very vulnerable it's like this idea of like uniquely vulnerable for Tyler to create yeah because it's like he's calling out everything like he's he's calling out his entire persona mm-hmm. right like the cars you drive the, the 10 million dollar investments that you make mm-hmm. you don't really need that shit like the the weird clothes you wear like who yeah. even likes that mm-hmm. it's like it's 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 you it's also it's uniquely vulnerable because like the whole last album was him being like yo i'm better than you in every way mm-hmm. so for him to like call be like why well, did that? Yeah, like that, shit, <laughs> that shit ain't really like. And by the way, it was feeds into the theme of this album. That shit ain't really fulfilling. Yeah, everything you was on with the mm-hmm. last album is like, it's cool and it's fun music and it's, it's like you're doing a yacht and you're traveling, but it's like, shouldn't you have kids? Why? Not? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> like and that. That's so him calling himself uh, out on that. I thought that was an amazing verse. Um, and then that, and from the rest of the album, he continues to be very vulnerable. And then and then we can get to um like him, which is yeah the song of the, the song of the album. For is me. that your favorite song? It's it's to me this is when literally when it clicked for me what his album was about. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh my, I only listened once, but this was I was like, oh, it makes sense now. Mm, yeah. So here here here's I wrote a long soliloquy in my notes about this. I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna read what I wrote. I'm excited to hear this. Like him is a song where his mother admits that it's her fault. His dad wasn't there at the time. Most most of his most, most of his career yelling "fuck his dad," screaming how he did need him and he was a piece of shit, and fuck him for not ever being around. And Tyler actively wanted a father figure his whole career, and at some point saying Clancy was his fucking father figure multiple times. Tyler spent four minutes and three four minutes and thirty seconds asking his mother how much is he like him, just for her to finally admit it's her fault. And then, in the most troy way possible, goes into a Charlie XCS 360 type beat. <laughs> this nigga is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's the song with Dolce, right? Yes. Yeah, it's so funny. It's, it's crazy. the funniest, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, funniest yeah, yeah. transition of. I, yeah. I just wrote that down because I listened. I'm like, this is the funniest part of the album to me. Yeah. Because it's so uniquely vulnerable. Yeah. It starts with, like, yeah. you look just like that nigga. Everything, even you got the same big dick and it cut off like. It's crazy. Why is my <laughs> getting freaky like that? What's going on? I tweeted, I was like, yo, why is Tyler's mom saying she got a, he got big dick? She's like, it's. That's weird. Uh, and then, like, like him is literally like, him like, how much am I like him? Mm, yeah. Like, it's him finally being like, I don't feel hurt that he wasn't around anymore. Just tell me so about him. Just tell him. me about him. Oh. I don't know. I, 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 I've, I'm 33 years old now, and I've never met him. I don't know him. How much am I like him? Bro, that shit is crazy. That, that has- That's, It's crazy because, like, by the way, you and I- yeah. Two men on this podcast who talk about our relationships with our dads all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. and how much we are like these men. Yeah. It hit home because I'm like, I'm just like my dad. You just like your dad. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm like, you are just like Tyler, you're just like him. And I, and I know he knows he's just like him, but mm-hmm. he never got a chance to be around him and feel with his energy. And this is even wilder, especially if you've been listening from the beginning of his career, because like you said, mm-hmm. like he's only be screaming, fuck my dad. Like a wolf, 
Hope answer. He had answer. It was probably one of his most vulnerable songs. It was mm. mad early in his career. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's him cursing him out all that, and then yeah. at the end of every like, every verse, he'll be like, "I hope you answer." I hope though. you answer. That's yeah. like the chorus of it. So seeing to to now, like him coming back, because I, I had to think when I heard that song, I'm like, "What is the last time he even talked about his dad?" I think answer might have been last. Like time. it's been a long time since he talked about his dad. So answer it's was like a decade ago. He's 23. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, 2013. Huh? I think you said 23. No, I said he was 23. Oh, he was 23. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that kid, he's 33 now. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it just hits even harder. And you're right. It even like that, that was a very powerful moment. His mom was like, mad bad. She, my said, bad, she said, don't like, be, don't be mad at you. Forgive me. Yeah. Yeah. It was my fault. It's, it's rough. It's the, it's the hardest listen on an album if you listen all the way through. As I'm listening, like, this is a really sad song. It is. It's yeah. a man, like, it's a man who never had the one man in his life he wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, and that hurt more because, like, as men, we all find men in our lives that we look up to, that we love and we appreciate. Yeah. And we, like, you know, sometimes they're older than us and we see them as, like, a uh, 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 mentors. Yeah, mentors. Yeah. Mentors. Or sometimes they're the same age as we see them as brothers. But the one relationship that a man has with another man that can never be replaced as a father. Mm-hmm. And Tyler like so desperately wants it. Very de- yeah. And he's just like, how much am I like him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then to go to that Charlie X. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, it's literally just 360. Have you listened? Do you listen to that song? Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's one of my favorite songs, actually. That's probably that probably explains why I never even made the connection. But the scene's like ding, 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 ding. it's yeah, just it's, the three. It's yeah. the same as that chord progression to 360. Yeah, and I only know I've never heard a 360 song. I'm not on TikTok. I don't listen, and I'm not gay. But I know it mean ain't rapped on that beat. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay. So that's how I know the song 360. I was like, ain't this a Charlie? Then I went to listen to mean ain't verse because that's how I that's how I know that's the record. <laughs> And I was like, oh, no, this is the Sam Zach beat. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I want to, can I just, you two going to copyright this? And you know what? And I, I'm just going to suck because we probably could make some money off this video. But I got to get. When you edit it, you might be able to cut it out for YouTube. I, I, I probably will. But I, yeah. I, 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 I got to get this point across. Even if we hear for like, I mean, you can, you can, we can hear for like a couple a seconds. A couple so seconds. I, just, I, I, need, I, need you, I need to just hear this fucking song. Okay, so here is. Wait, it's, it's not. It's not balloon. It is balloon. It is balloon. Yeah. My fault. Right. Okay, that's three seconds. That's, yeah, that's three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Charlie X has three sixty right there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Why is it not playing? What the fuck? Is, is, is you ruining the vibe? Yeah. I, I, Wow, that's crazy. It's the same. I didn't as, realize how close it was. It's yeah, the yeah. same as that chord progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like he heard. He's like, I love that song. Well, of course, he was probably at some fucking gay clubs, <laughs> and it was like that shit bumping. That, yeah. So that is, I never even thought to think about that comparison, but that makes sense. And that does make it like way funny. Also, it makes sense why he got Dochi on it. Yeah, Dochi exactly. loves those gay records. Yo, she loves gay type beats. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so that makes perfect <laughs> sense to me. That's a good. By the point. way, she got a bar on there. She said. I'm sorry, I'm laughing just thinking about it. Nah, bro, what she said, she was spinning. What she said? Dochi, American rapper and poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> latest T- TDE uh, uh, phenom. The latest T- the latest TDE phenom. Kendrick late recently co-signed it as the hardest out. They, they, you know, they saying that she gonna take over the world that soon. She's the next. She's next up. Yeah, I mean, and nobody. And, and listen, and when it comes to Dochi, nobody. You mean you can't you can't tell her you can't you can't tell nobody about her. No. Cause she cause she coming. She is coming. She said, I'll air this bitch out like a queef. Yep. <laughs> that wasn't an ad lib. It's more like a, a fart, but it wasn't an ad lib. What does record. a queef sound like? Like a fart, like a pussy okay, fart. Okay, so I was trying to do go for that, but she didn't she didn't ad lib that, but yeah. it was like I was doing some foley work, right? right oh, right, my fault, my fault, yeah, my fault, like, my oh, fault. Just so you guys know, that's what was being aired out. Not <laughs> Or pussy. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Bitch, I like yeah, that yeah. bar cut through <laughs> so heavy on that record too. Like, go listen to that song again and, and, and hear how much that bar stick out in the rest of the song. Yeah. <laughs> the only two remember things yeah. from that song is the Charlie XCX type beat and that then bar. I it is bitch, I like a queef. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, there is you're right. There is three outros because then there's the the real outro. Yeah. And that one. 
musically is great because there's like a breakdown like in halfway most of the songs have a breakdown because yeah. it's Tyler producing but um that song does serve as kind of like putting a neat little bow over the album because by the way a lot of people this is how I know you know albums are dying mm -hmm. I saw a bunch of people were like yo oh my god I can't believe Tyler's a father People are genuinely convinced on the internet that Tyler is, is like a dad. And I'm like, oh, you guys just don't know how to listen to an album. Yeah, you, you, what the fuck? Because even in the last song of the album, he's like, I almost had a kid this year, man. Yeah. He got crazy. Like, he he spelled he it out at he, the end of he it. He spelled it out for you, dumb fuck. <laughs> yeah, he literally put a, a, a nice bow on it. Uh, and that, that song was also good. Um, but I was going to say one more point about this album in the mm -hmm. vulnerability of it. You said this is 444 for like 30 year olds? Yeah, it is. 444 for 30 year olds. This is also Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers done right. Because one thing that Tyler has said is that he took a lot of inspiration from this album. From uh, from uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers listening yeah. to this album. And the way I know that he really liked that album and tried to do a similar thing was uh, uh, the part where the mom is talking at the end of uh, uh, Like Him. Mm -hmm. I, mean, she, I, mean, she, I mean, she's talking throughout the whole album. She is talking about that, but like the vulnerability, how hard that hits, it, almost like a hard listen. It is. It's similar to a song that Kendrick has on Mr. Mom and the Big Service goes Mother Eye Sober. Mm -hmm. And then there's the beginning of a song, I don't remember which one, but it starts like with a, like a really somber piano. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember hearing that? On Tyler's album? Yeah, on Tyler's album. Like it starts off with a sound. Obviously it changes, but the beginning is like a really somber. I can't it? remember. I only listened once. You listened eight times. Yeah, I forget what the fucking song is called, but it starts off with a really somber like piano. And it's just him kind of like singing over. Really, really kind of dark. There's a song, Kendrick's album called Crown, that you compare. You're like, oh yeah, he's trying to do that. So I think he... Got inspired by the vulnerability of Mr. Brown and the Big Steppers because, like, that album is a tough listen because how fucking like he's crying in some songs. She got like overly dramatic, yeah. you know, because really he thinks he's. I'm not gonna say he thinks he is healing inner traumas with that album. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, he's breaking generational curses, and I think Tyler heard that it was like. I could be more, more vulnerable in my album. I like that. And also, I'm old. So it's like, it's about time I become vulnerable. It's about time I take my, take my mask off, which is also a refrain on Mr. Brown and the Big Steppers. Uh. There's a song in 95 on Kendrick's album where it's like, you know, take the mask off, like, because COVID, you know what I'm saying? Like, Will had her mask through yeah. COVID. Oh my take your God. mask, you reveal your truth. <laughs> uh, he, yeah. Here, he, he, here's what I walked down about what this album's about. Okay. I said, from mature themes like postpartum depression, Telling niggas in the closet to be themselves yeah. and even calling out dudes who are too selfish to have kids, which I think he's talking about himself. Yeah. This album is a this album about a 33-year-old man looking around and realizing he's 33, which kind of is what the quote he said, yeah. which I, 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 I can find it. Uh, he said it on stage at the... Uh, at the listening party. In L.A. at the, the new Inuit Center. Yeah. Let me see. It's got to be on Kirk. You know, you know, they be I'm, I'm typing it. Here you go. He said, he said, <laughs> but I wrote this down before I read this. Uh, the album, the album kind of just turned into me talking about a bunch of shit my mom told me as a kid. Yeah. Now that I'm 33, all this stuff like, oh shit, what the fuck? Oh shit, what, what the fuck is she talking about? Is that? People are getting older, folks having families, and now all I got is for mm -hmm. Life is life, and I don't know. I just want to, I just want to write, I just want to write about some stuff. And think about when I'm dolo. Yeah. I think about when I'm dolo, mm -hmm. which is literally when I see it's a 33 year old man looking looking around and realizing, oh shit, I'm 33. Yeah, this yeah. is like this isn't a unique experience at all, but I think that's why it's uh, hit home for me personally. As a 27 year old, oftentimes I look around and be like, oh shit, I'm 27. Yeah, like oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, I'm 30. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not a kid no more. Like, I used to be young man. I'm not yeah, a young yeah. man no more. Like, it's that kind of feeling. Yeah. And I think we haven't had that kind of music. We also going to bring that up. Yeah. Oftentimes like, we get the, you know, the 444, Nas, still rap, all them niggas. We get the 40 year old, 50 year old rap albums. They're rapping about, like, you know, investments. Yeah, I mean, no, they just talk about, yo, the Alice's and shit like that. <laughs> I mean, but really, do you get the. Yeah, yeah. Really, do you get the young thirty-year-old, the yeah. young thirty-year-old, yeah. realizing that he's not young anymore? Because most yeah. times in hip hop, these people still are still young. They're presenting as young still. 
Tizo touchdown blew up at 31. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. And he had nails in his hair. He had, you see what I'm saying? This is what you do, in, especially in hip hop, when you're like, if you break out, and listen, everybody in Griselda got their first popular song, mm-hmm. like I've been well to the 30s. Jid is like 33. Mm-hmm. Like these are all rappers that aren't talking about, like, yo, I'm kind of. Like, I'm. I'm kind of old. I'm not young. Because to them, yeah, but but they can't even think like that because they just are getting their break in hip-hop. But I think it's because Tyler has been popping. Has been for since fucking... Since he was 19. Yeah, it was, he was really young. He's and been, now, yeah. now he's like, I'm I'm an old man. Yeah, which is... Yeah, which again is kind of like a, a, a very unique... It's not unique <laughs> to the feeling, but in hip-hop, the idea of an artist be, making a, 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 an album like he did at the mm-hmm. age... Cause it will probably be like a fucking a Jay Z or Nas hearing that that uh, a Tyler album being like, "You don't know nothing, young man. Mm-hmm. You still got so much life ahead of you." But it's like it's perspective, you know. Like for for somebody like Dom and most people that grew up with with Tyler the Creator since two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, yep. like this album was gonna hit like home, it, it hit home to them. And I think uh, that's what most people are missing that are like, "Oh, you know, if you know, this is I don't like it." Like most of his newer fans, which Tyler has a lot of them. Yeah. Has a lot of newer fans because he got like a Northwest. whole new audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't the listening party, by yeah. the way. Uh, it's a bunch of young people not realizing yeah. like what this album is about. And I'm not even and I, I'm not mad at him. Uh because it's not for you. No, it's really not. It's and not. it's weird to say, but I think it's like it not being for you means that what I played. Earlier in the podcast, so I'm talking about the Earl video where you grow with it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Grow with album. Just because the album isn't for you now, doesn't mean it's not for you forever. Potty mouth. Yeah. Stop playing. Well, hello, potty mouth.